Hello and welcome to another Budget Model Railways video. Now, one of the first videos we did was how to make your own freelance sort of cardboard model railway buildings. And it's been one of the most popular and it's something I've wanted to come back to for a little while. So what I wanted to do, we've also had people ask lots of questions about it. Uh, how do we get our designs and so on? So I wanted to start this one with showing a drawing that I've done. What I've done is I've gone online, I've Googled some photos of buildings that I like and I've taken the style of the buildings rather than necessarily than the dimensions. This is uh, based on one I saw that I think is on the Settler and Carlisle, which would be probably as big as this piece of paper. It's also worth bearing in mind that a lot of the buildings are quite big if you model them the same as real life. So I tend to do a reduced size so that it fits better. So simple things to start when you're doing buildings. Doors, single doors, I do about 12 millimetres wide, about three feet wide in real life by 28 millimetres tall or um, seven feet. That should be ample to do a door. And then I'm working the rooms from there. So I know if that's your single door and I want two single doors on the end and so on. Um, and then it's just basic geometry that you've probably done at school, lots of straight lines. Now what you'll find is if you start, for instance, with the overhead view, then you can use a ruler to mark in a lot of your other lines makes it easier. And what I've done here is obviously this is that face. This is that face, but obviously turned around so we can see it. It also helps when you're designing buildings if you have a rough knowledge of what they were used for in real life. So I did a little bit of real reading and I know that even a relatively small station would have um, a ticket office, a parcels office, a waiting room, a ladies waiting room and toilets and a man's toilets. And then I'm also putting in here the idea of a little station master's or porter's office. And then I've got a little covered area at the front because this wall is going to set back. Um, and it's as simple as that, really. And marking it out, the first drawing I did, I wasn't happy with the dimensions of it. It didn't look right. So I've redrawn it. But once you're happy with it, keep it simple. There's no need to do a lot of detail because we're going to work that out later. So windows, doors, and I know what's what. And there I've got my ends, my sides, and my roof plan. And actually, a lot of the things will suggest themselves as you're making, so like the shape of the roof. And then this is just a little shelter on the end for the gents' toilet. So that's the plan. So here I've built a side. So you're gonna to say to yourself, hang on, we've, we've gone from drawings to sides very quickly. But what I want to show is a slightly different construction technique. I've always done it the traditional way, build the shell and then wrap the brick paper around and try and get doors and windows on. But I've been reading a couple of books, I'll, I'll get one later and show you in the video, and also saw something in Continental Modeler. Given that I always neaten the edges up with edge pieces, I'm actually going to make this almost like a kit where I build each side first. So there we've got one, you can see I've got multicoloured doors, blue brick trim at the bottom, lintels, windows. So let's show you how we get to that stage. So how do we get one of these sides? Well, let's take this side that we haven't got yet. Now there's a couple of way you can, ways you can get the dimensions off this. I tend to take it off the drawing. So that's six mil um, by four mil. However, as you did the drawing, you could equally have done a little note there that takes you that, that 60 millimeters or six centimeters or a little line there that tells you what the dimensions are, and then you could read them off. So we need a, a square of that shape. Now I'm using here black backed card. The reason I'm using black backed is simply because it saves you having to paint the inside and then you get a nice dark inside. So it's relatively simple. We're gonna take a point there and a point there. Now I know some of you are thinking that I know how to do this, but equally we get a lot of people that say, I've never done anything like this, so I wanted to do it from the beginning. Now to get it square, if you haven't got a set square, mark that four, and then you know that that is four and level across there. Little mark there. And there we've got a nice square wall. Now, so I now know I want to do my doors. So my door is 20 mil, so that's really relatively simple. We need a center point which is three, and that's there, and that's there. And again, the easiest way of keeping it square is to mark it up the top. Like that. Let's 
moved actually that wasn't very well done on my part there you go that shows you how to do it wrong so i've done my marks wrong but i had, but i noticed it there we go and it just was a bit quick there we go so and i know that the door i think on this one is slightly taller because that's the main door so that's 30 mils and that's your door marked out. So the door lintel, the window lintels are the same height, so that's nice and easy, straight line across. We've got 20 mil here, so we know that in the middle it's gonna be 10 mil, five mil each side. I don't need to measure that to know that. Windows are 20 deep. And again, the easiest way is to draw a line right the way across the bottom. there we go that's just old woodwork thing from when I did O-level woodwork that just marks the waste material so straight edge and a very sharp blade and this is an old Stanley knife um, the Poundland knives are all right you can change the blades I've never got on with scalpels um, but I know a lot of people swear by them the only thing that really matters is it's a really sharp blade there we go. And that gives us then that. Um, corners are quite tricky. So I, I usually try and just push them through first. Like that. And now I've got a relatively straight smooth hand and then you can push that through with a knife like that. I find a smaller ruler better for doing these. This was a pound from a discount shop. So again, we're, we're using cheap tools. There's no need to go spending huge sums of money here. Now this building, when you see, there's nothing here that is difficult. So although it looks quite detailed and fiddly, it is time consuming, but there's nothing here that anybody couldn't do and I've actually only taught myself this from reading books and things like that um, and as you've probably heard me say before quite frankly if I can do it anybody can do it because uh, I'm no artist I think we've said before it's interesting though isn't it that if I imagined a scene and painted it or drew it I'd be called an artist if I imagine this building and make it as a 3d model the best I am is a, is a model railway maker a hobbyist Interestingly, they pointed out recently that a lot of crafts done, a lot of hobbies and crafts done by women are called crafts. But if it's done by model railways, then it gets called a hobby. But I'm, really, you could argue that it is a craft. It is a skill. Um, but what it never gets called is art, which is interesting, really. When you think of some of the strange art. I can put a can of baked beans in the middle of the tape and call it art and it's worth 20 grand. Um, I can build a building from my imagination and I'm still not an artist. Interesting point to discuss. Um, and we do get some nice comments. Occasionally get some unfortunately unpleasant ones. People do swear at us and things. Um, all that happens I'm afraid when people do that is they get blocked and we report them to YouTube. Um, and we do get a few. Uh, sometimes I suppose if you could say understandable so the old three and one oil one did get people a bit steamed up and the price one but occasionally we get people i think i think they're called trolls they just sit on the internet late at night with nothing better to do and post abusive messages taking the mick um but it's about two percent of our people the vast majority of you are wonderful thank you very much you know how much we appreciate your comments and your input right so there we go as i say not difficult um we do have a new motto that we saw from a programme of a guy doing axe carving, which is, if you lose focus, you lose fingers. So you do need to keep focused. I do have a few nicks and cuts from doing 3D printing. So there's a little side. So that was nice and simple. It's a fairly complex little shape. So let's show you now how we're then going to get that to that. So we're going to start on this. Now, what I found is uh, glue sticks 
are much better than PVA glue and I've found that even these cheap glue sticks are okay for doing this um, and we don't you don't get the bubbles and things so PVA all over and then we're just going to put it in place on there nice and simple like that push it down and then we're going to trim it off just like that So you can see from that side and then that side we've got this. So now we're going to do the doors and the windows and what we're going to do here is we're going to put a Y-shaped cut in the door and the knife blade needs to be really sharp otherwise you just tear the paper like that. Now because we've only got a small amount here we'll trim that off like that. Like now you will find here that a little bit of PVA is better for this. So what we're going to do now is just run a little bit of PVA. These little bottles are great. We got them from Hobbycraft and you can cut the nozzles and do all sorts of things. It's just easier than having a big bottle of PVA. Now the PVA we use comes from Screwfix. Um, don't buy the Poundland stuff. It, it's too watery. It won't do these sort of buildings. Um, Big uh, five litre gallon tub was £10 from Screwfix, which is a really good price. And it's really good PVA. Now what you can see there, what that's done, it's put uh, brick paper around the edge of my door frame. You can just see that there. Okay, nice and easy. Now I actually worked that technique out for myself, only to discover uh, a wonderful book. I will do it at the end of the video. I haven't got it here. Written by um, somebody in the 1950s. And of course they used the same techniques then. There's, there's only so many finite ways, I suppose, of doing it. So all around the edge there. It's a bit messy, but then that's what makes it fun, of course. When Doug was nine and started Model Railways, it was all the mess that he really liked being a small child. Uh, doing ballast and things like that. So you can see how we folded that over. You do need to get your fingers in there, push it well up against the edges so that you've got a nice square. Don't worry if you get a bit of PVO on the brickwork, it dries clear if it stains it a little. So what? It's different coloured brick. So same again. Now, the other thing I ought to say, there is more than one way of building buildings. So I'm not saying this is the only way of doing it, and I'm sure we'll get lots of comments from people saying, well, why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it that way? That's how we learn. Um, but also, you know, we tend to do what we're happiest with. This is my way of building buildings. It won't work for everybody. Um, or you could do what I do quite often. You might want to adapt a bit of it and find your own way of doing it. So that's that. Now the blue brick is really easy. So what we've got here is a strip of five mil blue brick that I've already done. Can you pan out a bit? I'm struggling. I'm just going to pan out a little bit because I'm struggling to get it done. So what we're going to do here, a little dob of glue there and there. We're going to put that there and push it on so it's nice and straight. That's on the back and then obviously we're going to run it a little bit along the front. You don't need much PVA. Now, I'm using super quick brick papers uh, because I happen to have bought a load very cheap. I'm well aware that you can do all sorts of downloads, so please don't, in the nicest possible way, please don't bother sending us lots of things saying, you know you can get free downloads, don't you? Yes, I know you do. Uh, please use whatever brick papers you like. Scale scenes are very good. 3DK do some nice ones. Um, you know, the super quick aren't expensive even if you're buying them new. I tend to buy them second hand whenever I see them. There we go. So that's the blue brick around the bottom. So what we've got here, we've got some brown card, uh, thick paper really. So we're gonna start making the doors. So I've drawn out 
the outline there, which is the outer. And then I'm just doing this in pencil. Now, you can't see the pencil marks, um, but that's because obviously I don't want them to show when we're finished. So um, you'll just have to take my word for it, what I'm doing. You'll see in a minute the result. So the middle of the door I am going to do it in a dark pen because that's the, it's a double door. So nice big line. And then what I want to mark in is I want to mark in the panels. Now I'm going to do this a little bit free by freehand. I'm not going to measure it out as such. Um, I'm just going to put a line in there, which is the top of the door. Um, so we need a, a line here. And this is to try and help me then mark out the relief panels, which are quite fiddly. Yeah, I had this problem before. Um, it's quite difficult to see them. Um, I'm still experimenting a bit with this. So let's have a little go. Yeah, that's quite good. Now, so now I've got uh, an okay eye. You could measure this out. Um, I'm not too bothered at this stage. So I've got the top of the door there. So let's have this. Now what I'm using here is the fact that the pencil shines under certain light. So I'm moving it so I can see the pencil mark and then they won't be too obvious uh, when I come to do them later. So we've got another one there and that gives me another one there. But you could measure this out if you want. I say I'm, I'm not as fast. Um, I only had a go at this the other night and I was quite pleased with it on those doors. Yep, they'll be fine. So we just want to do I think like that and like that and that's going to look quite nice. So this is where it gets fiddly. So you've got to get a sharp knife. So again, otherwise the paper will tear and we're going to cut out eight of these sections. So what we have here is our little cutout piece and what we're going to do now is just glue that onto some contrasting lighter card, or thick cartridge paper. Now obviously you could do um, whatever colours you like. I happen to have done brown and cream here which I guess is a little bit Great Western. You could do a really nice lime green, uh, the pale blue and cream like they had on the Scottish, one of the Scottish lines would be lovely. There we go. Now I'm actually just going to do a second one here because I made one earlier which is going to be the front door on the other side of the building. Uh, so I'm just going to do this while I'm here. While I'm in the groove as it were. There we go. And then that's ready for the other side of the building as well. So we're going to take this and it's obviously going to get glued in there like that to give us our doors. Uh, sorry, I'll put it upside down. So we just need to trim here. Trim this off a little bit. Again, relatively simple. Bit of glue around the edge. And then put the door in place. And there we have it. That's um, a nice little, um, nice little piece there showing you um, our door in place and our bricks at the bottom. So now we just need to look at windows. So windows are relatively simple. Now this came off a cake box. Uh, my son's birthday cake box. Uh, it's just a form of cellophane, so that's all we need is something like that. So there's a couple of ideas, different ways of going to do this. What I've been doing is to mark out the edge of the window um, by drawing through it 
like that. That gives me a window. And now I can use that to do the edge. So the, the edging that we're going to use is actually this. This is um, self-adhesive uh, printer stickers, basically. And we're just going to cut them into the straight lengths we need. A little bit fiddly. Um, put it across the middle there in the right place. Nothing too complicated on this one. It's going to be a little cross window. Nice and simple like that. And then we're going to put some around the edge. Now the stuff around the edge can be a little bit thicker. And we're just going to use our line there to see how far it needs to come over. So you just know where the line is and take it a little bit further over. You could do this as neat or as rough and ready as you like. Um, me being me, I tend to do it a bit rough and ready, but you could mark it all out, use your ruler and everything. Um, I tend not to. So we know that that's our line there. So we just put it a little bit over and we'll do the same at the bottom. Now, obviously with a bit of practice and I have, I have done some practice on these, you can do very intricate window frames if you want to. Oh, ha, that was clever. <laughs> Peeled off the, <laughs> threw the sticker away and kept the non-sticky bit. That wasn't very good. Now I've done this a bit chunkier than I would normally just so that you can see really how I've gone about doing the window. So we're then going to cut that obviously right the way down. Cut it to size a bit more. And then that's going to fit in our window like that. Um, and the easiest way of doing that um, is to use sellotape, which I've just sent my helpful assistant to go and get. So the easiest way of doing this is just to use sellotape. Uh, it's a little bit tricky because you've got to get it lined up to your satisfaction. Uh, right, so hopefully you saw that. So we've just stuck that on with sellotape. Nice and easy. A little bit of spare there. There we go. So that's one. Um, I won't bore you by showing you this second one because you get the idea of that. But just to um, finish off, I'm just going to do the lintels. Now obviously some will be um, one or two different pieces. As this is such a small piece, I'm going to run big long along the top. It's 55 millimetres long. We're going to do it four millimeters thick, um, nice and simple, just marked out. Uh, you can use scissors or knife, whatever your preference is. And this is obviously the same card um, that we use to do the backs of the doors. going to glue this on here. Just like that. Nice and simple. Across the top of our doors and windows. And that's our little stone lintel. There we go. Just like that. So we've got two sides there then. And then obviously what we'll show you next time is how we join these together uh, and finish them off, how we can build the building. Uh, we'd like to try and, I'd like to be able to promise and say next week we'll have another big video on this, but it could well be a month. We're very busy with lots of things at the moment. Uh, but this is obviously a project I want to crack on. So hopefully in about a month we should have all the sides done and then I can show you how we join them together and build the carcass. And then after that, how we do the roofs and the detailing. But that's the start. I'm sure actually a lot of you can work out from here how we're going to do it if you want to crack on. But if not, we look forward to seeing you in a while and watching again. Thank you as always for watching and commenting. Uh, thank you for watching this video and we look forward to seeing you again soon.
Hello, Budget the Bear, who's very keen to help. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.